choosing rather to suffer affliction of the people of God than to enjoy passing through pressures of sin. You're watching High Step TV. Are you married or you're dating? Do you even have plans of ever getting married? Or you are single by choice? Join me on YouTube channel High Step TV as we dive deep into matters relationships, marriage, and parenting, and how these bonds affect our relationship with God. Let us learn together on ways we can improve and build strong, healthy relationships in the right foundation. The Bond Bond Show. Show. Beautiful people, godly bonds. Yes, welcome. As we continue to run, about destinies. Now we are going to share about the hindrances to our destiny. In the Bible, we learned in Jeremiah 1 that God knew us and he holds our destiny. He had the plans. He had the plan for each one of us in his book. Even he has written the word of God in Samsa. 139. The Bible says, ah, You saw my substance even before I, when I was being formed in my mother's womb, and you wrote them in your record. We can now run from the Bible about a few people who had a great destiny, and of course, God Himself had said about them. We can see an example of Samson in Judges. Samson was born in a family of Manoah, and they did not have a child. But one day, the angel of God appeared to Manoah's wife and told her to avoid wine because in her womb, he, she will carry a man who, who is carrying the destiny of the people of Israel. And when Samson was born, the word of God says, the Holy Spirit of God was upon him, and he judged Israel for some time. But on the way, the enemy brought a hindrance. We can see now, Samson changed his ways, and left the ways of God, started his own ways, and he started to live in a sinful life, which caused him to go to Gaza, meeting with uh, Delilah and many other harlots. His life was changed. Now his destiny was destroyed. It was distracted. So now, we see uh, Samson dying uh, of someone who has not achieved uh, or fulfilled his destiny. And so now we can see that destiny have enemies. Those are hindrances. We see from that life of uh, Samson, leaving the way of God led him to destruction. So number one, sins can be a hindrance of us achieving our destiny. Also, disobedience can also bring us to distraction. It can hinder us from achieving our destiny. We can see Jonah. He was a servant of God and he was called by God. And when he was sent, he could not go. He disobeyed God, went to Tarshish. He even slept in the sea. When he slept, idols were being worshipped there. And then uh, his destiny was almost distracted and the destiny of the people of Ninawi. For us as family members, because we start there and we are called, when we feel and we see that our ways are not light in God. Maybe you are called and now you have started to go astray. 
with the spirit of disobedience, it is good to come back to God and repent and confess and remember, I carry and you carry the destiny. So if you come back to God, he will restore us and remove that hindrance of our destiny. Another thing that cause uh, uh, destruction or hindrance, it is jealous. Mostly in our families. When jealous enter in our families, it distract our destinies. We can see that area of Cain. When Cain was jealous because of Abel, he, he even ended up killing him and destroying his destiny also. We can see in the house and family of Jacob, when those brothers of Joseph were jealous of him, they ended up selling him. They tried even to kill him. They attempted. So we see Jesus also is a hindrance to our destiny. But uh, we have an example here of Moses who overcomed many things and hindrance. And at last, he made to fulfill his destiny and to take, uh, to usher in the children of Israel. Let us read the word of God in Hebrews 11, verse 24. We can learn many things that uh, Moses did and principles that he applied, that he made him to overcome and ushered him to his destiny. We are going to read from 24. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. From that, we learn that uh, Moses discovered his uh, destiny. And when he was grown up, he knew he had something to pursue. What he did, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. That principle can also apply in us. We have many things to, to, to live. When he refused, he took a step. We see that, verse 25, choosing rather to suffer affliction of the people of God than to enjoy passing through pressures of sin. Number two, he chose. It is for us to choose which way are we going to live so that we can, it can lead us to our destiny. Many are ways outside there and path, but the, there is only one path that can lead us to our destiny. So Moses chose. Number three, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater leashes than the treasures in Egypt. Yes, for he looked to the reward. This enabled Moses to pursue his destiny. He esteemed the reproach of Christ greater leashes than the treasures. He valued the, in, uh, the internal. He, uh, he lived and set apart those external things because he knew those wild riches will add up to an end, but internal, doing what God called him to, to lead the children of Israel could help him and he will be re rewarded. He also, by faith, he forsake Egypt, not fearing the love of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is ineffaceable. He forsake. My viewer, in our families, there are many things we have to forsake. We forsake uh, evil or bad companies. We forsake many things so that we can be able to deliver or to achieve 
our goal of destiny and that will help us to remove hindrance on the way. We see Moses also, uh, he ensured uh, uh, seeing him who is invisible. That is faith. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he would destroy the firstborn, uh, lest he who destroys the firstborn should touch them. Now, my viewer, let us have a, a, this case study of Moses. When uh, he refused to be called a son in, uh, of Pharaoh's daughter, now he possessioned himself. He endured even many trials and troubles in the wilderness. And uh, also he forsake whatever was being provided and he forecast to the, uh, extern, the eternal hours so that our families could start. We have to do like uh, Moses. There are things there we have to forsake. There are things there we have to refuse. Hold them, do away with them as a mother, do away with things that will may later the enemy have a loophole to enter in our families. Is it ego? Is it pride? Is it disobedience? Those obstacles and hidden that we saw there? Is it sraba? We see this woman who there were two of them. They were they had God given birth. And when they slept, one of us slept and the other woke up first and she, she, she ran that she has slept, uh, she has pressed her baby and it, it, it is already, the, the boy is dead. So she exchanged and uh, took the boy that was alive and pressed the one that was dead to this woman. When she woke up because of her slept, she, the, her destiny, her boy was, has been exchanged. When we slab there as women, as wives, as mothers in our families, our destiny might be at, at a risk of being exchanged. The devil is at work. He is wandering, hovering outside there like a lion. He does not want us to enter our destiny. So stand, awake, woman of God. Start with your family. Defend your destiny by awakening, by praying, by seeking the face of God, by being worshipful. Salaw your family. Protect, put a hedge. Don't slobber like this lady. Because when we slobber, our destinies will be changed, will be exchanged. We see our women of our destiny, like this no, noble woman in uh, Proverbs 31. He is an active woman, waking up early, not moving here and there, visiting, wasting time. She wakes up early. She has ideas. She has plans of future. And someone said, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I'm speaking to family members there. Are you planning? Have you planned your future? Where are you now? And where are you going? As a father or a man in the family, do you have objectives? Do you have plans in your life? What will happen to, your, to yourself? When you, you grow up, alias, you are old now, you become old one day. Do you have, are you saving, are you securing your future? Or you are wasting up outside there, living as if you shall not live tomorrow. It is for us to fight those hindrance of our destiny, not to be less stressed, to be men and women of destiny who plans 
and achieve goals. Who can stand and say, this is what I have achieved in life. Work out your, your plan. Work out. Let them work out. If you are educating your children, take them to higher levels. Give them the light education. Give them the light courses. Give, teach them the good morals that they shall not rely on you. They shall not uh, live in a desperate way. They shall not even lack. Be a responsible person. Hold on. Be responsible for the destiny of your family. I was wondering about Esau because there was Esau and Jacob. And we can see Esau was outside there wondering. It is as if there was no one to take care of this young man. Jo uh, Jacob was safe at home. He could eat and cook his mother's food. But now Esau was outside there. Something has, had failed in that family. The destiny of Esau ended up when he sold his birthright because he, he was not wired. He did not even discover and knew that this is my birthright and I have to, uh, to guard it until I see the end. In their culture, the firstborn were the ones who were receiving double portion. There we are in our families, where we are possessioned. We are the ones to receive the double portion of the blessings of God. We take the blessings of God, bring them to our families, apply them to our lives. But when we shrubber, we sleep when we are supposed to be alert and awake, working out for our destiny, our uh, destiny, uh, we sell and we give in like a sow. We, we look at uh, many other examples in the Bible uh, for people who had been assigned of great assignment and they failed on the way. Saul is one of them. Even if Saul uh, was chosen by God, it is uh, God also, another time told Samuel, I regret for choosing Saul. Father, mother, family member, will God regret for taking you and possessioning you in that fa family? For seeing how you are irresponsible? For seeing how you are disobedient? For seeing how you are not taking serious your destiny? May God forbid, it is for us to know that they are destiny destroyers. They are hindrances. Let us stand and fight them. Fight for our inheritance. I remember Chefida. This man was born outside the, uh, the wedding, a wedlock. He was born by a harlot and he knew it. And even he was thrown away by that family. But this guy stood firm because he was, he knew in him he was brave enough. He was strong enough. He did not give up until this family came back for him. He was ready. What if he was thrown out uh, from that family and he went uh, and uh, lived, uh, uh, arrived uh, losing his destiny. Even when they were going to him, he could have been nowhere to be found. But he went and stood somewhere, living that life outside the family, but knowing I hold uh, a destiny of this family. Whether I'm born outside by a harlot, I know God knows uh, the plans he has for me plans of greatness and if any member of the family there listen to yourself and accept and understand that you are there with a purpose you cannot go out there and waste your time you can start firm and fight all those hindrance all those obstacles 
and start farm to rescue your family and to usher them in to their destinies. We have a lot to pray. Like Moses, let us take heart and no, don't compromise with earthly things, with life that is out of God. Concentrate with your maker. I was thinking about uh, the, a designer, the one who designed clothes. When you wear that dress, you see that something is not, the buttons maybe are not in the right place. You return them, the dress to the designer and he or she made it and put it in the right way. Ours now, as we fight for our destiny, where we see we have slumbered, where we see we have failed, let us return to our maker. He holds the manual. He will help us and bring us back to the light track. And our destiny shall not de be destroyed. We learn a lot about Timothy. I thank God because of uh, Eunice and Lois. I love this and I keep on mentioning it. Because the destiny of this family, they ushered their family in a destiny of God-fearing and they added up achieving their assignment as a priesthood family. There you are. Ask God, this is my destiny. Help me, Father, to fight those distractions and hindrance that are achieved my destiny by your grace. May God bless you as you continue to fight the enemies of your destiny by God's grace. Thank you and welcome. This is High Step Media Production. Je, wewe ni msanii na ungependa kuchukua hatua kabambe katika kuboresha usanii wako? Je, wewe ni msanii mpya usiyejua utaanza vipi katika kufanikisha usanii wako? Je, Waitaji kufanyiwa video za harusi, matukio, dokumentari, au pia kutengenezewa filamu na kupigwa picha? High Step Media ina majibu kwa masuala haya yote kwa bei rahisi. Tutembelee pale Homeland au wasiliana nasi kwa njia ya simu kupitia nambari 0706299166. Karibu. Kazi yao wanafanya ni kazi nzuri sana. Nimefurahia sana kazi ambao wanafanya. Come High Step Media Production. You never know, you can be a star of tomorrow. Self media, yeah. kwanza wana upendo, ni wakarimu sana. Mm -hmm. Na kama ni wakarimu, ndiyo mana tumefika hapa tumefika.